Hello and welcome to Bite Sized MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We are not associated with any MRCP examination organisations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam or indeed medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite sized revision, give us a thumbs up and press the like and subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic. Today, we will be discussing discoid lupus erythematosus. This is part of our series discussing um, lupus more broadly. Um, and you'll remember that so far we've um, had a look at SLE and subacute cutaneous lupus. And today we will be discussing discoid lupus. So what is discoid lupus? Um, this is a lupus variant that affects the skin only and it leads to chronic scarring. Um, and it's actually the most common form of cutaneous lupus. It's more frequent in females, as is the case for um, lupus more broadly, um, usually um, in those aged 20 to 40. Um, it's also more frequent in non-Caucasians. Discoid lupus is characterized by persistent scaly plaques on sun exposed areas, which lead to scarring, skin atrophy and discoloration. There's also permanent hair loss in the affected areas. Um, and this condition can lead to either hypo or hyperpigmented skin. In this image, you can see um, the sequelae of um, the, the effects of discoid lupus, um, leading to extensive loss of scalp hair, um, as well as scarring of the scalp. In terms of tests, um, really, you need to be investigating um, these individuals as though you're investigating for um, a systemic lupus um, um, picture. Um, so in that respect, you would be testing for um, full blood count, um, renal function, as well as um, the other serological markers for lupus. However, um, discoid lupus is typically ANA negative, which you'll remember is unusual for a systemic lupus. Um, and if it's ANA positive, this means that patients are more likely to progress to a systemic form of the disease. If a skin biopsy is performed, the features vary depending on the stage of discoid lupus, um, but generally you may find there's a periappendageal lymphocytic infiltrate. The management of discoid lupus um, is firstly conservative um, and then medical. So conservative measures may include um, the use of sunscreen and photo protection. Um, patients should be encouraged to stop smoking as this can lead to um, a poorer prognosis of disease. Vitamin D supplementation is crucial, um, particularly as these patients are encouraged to stay out of the sun or um, wear sun hats and um, uh, where possible avoid sun exposure. Um, and then there's also um, the use of cosmetic camouflage due to the scarring effects of the condition. In terms of medical management, um, steroids are the mainstay of therapy, and these can either be topical or intralesional. After that, um, one may require calcineurin inhibitors, um, such as tacrolimus, um, oral prednisolone may be required. Um, and then after that, um, it can be considered to use hydroxychloroquine or methotrexate. Complications from discoid lupus um, can be wide varying. We've already discussed some of them. So some of these do include scarring and boldness, um, particularly if the scalp is involved. Progression to SLE may occur if the patient is ANA positive. And in rare circumstances, um, discoid lupus can also lead to squamous cell carcinoma. So now if we um, look at some questions. Firstly, which of the following investigative findings is typical of discoid lupus? ANA positive, deranged liver function tests, glomerulonephritis on renal biopsy, lymphocytic infiltrate on skin biopsy, 
or protein urea on pro on urine dip. Um, so these are all findings that you may find in various autoimmune conditions, some of which we've discussed in previous videos. Um, but you'll recall from a few slides ago that lymphocytic infiltrate on a skin biopsy is a typical finding in discoid lupus. So question two, a 28 year old African American lady with a known diagnosis of discoid lupus presents to clinic. She is a non smoker. She has tried conservative measures as well as intralesional steroids, but presents with a new scaly annular rash to her forehead. What is the most appropriate next step in her management? So the options are methotrexate, a trial of oral prednisolone, mycophenolate, leflunomide or vitamin D supplements. So we can see from the vignette that firstly, she's a non smoker, so that's good. Um, if she was a smoker, we'd encourage her to stop smoking as part of the management. Um, it says that she's tried conservative measures, so we can assume that she already um, protects herself from the sun um, and reduces sun exposure. Um, and it also says that she's tried intralesional steroids, um, which is already um, part of the medical management. So really, we're looking to see what can be used in the next step of her medical management, um, given that she appears to be presenting with a new lesion related to her discoid lupus. So the answer to this would be to trial some oral prednisolone, um, as you'll remember from the treatment algorithm previously. So that's the end of this episode of Bite Sized MRCP. Thank you for listening. If you like what you've heard today, give us a thumbs up. Um, and hit the like and subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss our next episode. Um, let us know in the comments what topics you would like to hear from us in future, and we'll see you in our next episode.